going to be doing pro two problems uh, in this uh, short video. We're going to do 13.7 and 13.8. These are pretty short problems, so I figured I'd just fit them both. Uh, yeah, we're going to continue with the problem 13 problems from the fundamentals of chapter 13. Uh, equations of motion, um, and in this case, we are in the uh, tangential normal plane. Um, so, let's see here. So here we have the block rests at a distance of two meters from the center of the platform. The coefficient of static friction between the block and the platform is uh, 0.3. Determine the maximum speed which the block can attain before it begins to slip. Okay. So let's see. Um, in this, let's let's draw what it looks like in the horizontal plane. Okay. So that's uh, that's. That's the side view of this plate, right? Here we have, uh, let's say this is, well, technically the Z coordinate, and, you know, the box is here, okay? And then uh, pointing into the center of the circle, or the, you know, the center of our curvature, is going to be the normal direction. And then tangential would be, you know, if we look at this box here in the drawing, you know, tangential would be perpendicular to, you know, perpendicular to that uh, side of that, or normal to this side of the cube over here, okay? So we have the z-axis, and then this is the normal direction, or normal little n. Anyway, so let's let's see. So this is spinning, right? Uh, what is the for, what are the forces acting on this block itself? Well, we know it's going to have the weight, which is mg. Okay. Now, if it's starting to spin, the the table wants to kind of throw the block off the table, right? So, we, you know, we begin to spin something, this thing wants to just fly out in this direction, okay? So what does that mean about the friction that's trying to hold it in? Well, the friction, oh my god, it's terrible, oh my goodness. The friction is going to be pointing into the center of curvature, and it's the static friction. And we have one more, which is the normal. Okay, those are our three forces that are acting on this uh, body. Okay, so then we're just gonna do the equations of motion. So force in the normal direction is equal to the mass times the acceleration in the normal direction. Um, if we do forces in the y direction, right? Sorry, in the z direction in this case, right? The block is in static equilibrium in that, in that coordinate uh, axis, so we're going to have no, normal minus mg equals zero. And that tells us that the normal is equal to the weight. Okay. That makes things easier. So now we have to figure out what this equation is. Uh, what's So figure out what's the normal acceleration. Well, we can also write it as b squared over rho, okay? A rho is uh, the radius of curvature, which in this case is going to be 2 meters, okay? So we're going to have mass times b squared over 2. And we're trying to figure out what this v is, okay? On the left-hand side, we're going to add up all the forces in the normal direction, okay? So we're going to have uh, Fs, that's it, equals and v squared over 2. Okay. But let's, let's, um, what is Fs? Let's kind of like open it up here. Fs is just the static friction coefficient times the normal. Okay. And we know that the normal is the weight. Okay. which we can also write as the normal as, sorry, the weight as 
M G. Okay. So when we plug everything into this equation here, the one I'm circling, we're gonna end up with US and G equals mass V squared over two. The masses cancel out, and then we'll get We'll get uh, mu, move everything to the left hand side, so it's going to be mu s times g times 2 square root of all that equals v, and then we can get the maximum velocity that this thing can spin before the, the static, uh, you know, the acceleration uh, or, or, or the right hand side term. Of, of, uh, of this equation beats up the static friction coefficient and in that case we're going to have a net force acting in that direction so we're going to have maximum velocity of this disk and spin would be 2.43 meters per second That's it. Okay, that's, that's so this problem is pretty quick. This these are pretty uh, pretty good warm up problems. The next one's going to be F thirteen eight. So let's determine the maximum speed that the jeep can travel over the crest of the hill and not lose contact with the load. So that's pretty easy. So usually when we're given these type of problems where it's like you know a car going over a bump. If we draw a free body diagram of the forces acting on the car uh, as it goes over that hump, we'll see. You know, if it's going at, you know, let's say it's going at a, at a reasonable velocity, then it's not going to jump off the, you know, it's not going to jump off or of, uh, of get air, right? So it's not going to get air off this and become parabolic or go through some project on motion. It's normal and weight will be equal. Okay, but as you begin to speed up, as you get, begin to keep picking up speed, that normal acting on the car right, is going to begin decreasing. So the weight will remain the same because the weight's not going to change. And you go faster and faster until the normal is like negligible. And we only have the weight acting on the car. You know, maybe at the maximum, the normal is a little tiny bit, okay? And as you keep going, then there will be no normal. When there's no normal, that's basically when the car picked up air, right? So when it's like, if these are the, the tires, they're, you know, they're just, they're just about to, um, like unglue from the road, okay, and that's kind of the the, the scenario that we wanna uh, that we wanna find out, okay. So let's see. So the free body diagram of this car will be the weight, right? And like I said, we're trying to go with this um, like extreme scenario where there's no normal, right, to figure out what's the fastest velocity that you can go when the normal disappears. Okay. So that'll be forces in the normal direction. Okay. And that'll be mg, which is the weight of the car, times the mass of the car, times the normal acceleration, which is again v squared over rho. Amps cancel out, and you'll just be left with V equals the square root of rho g. And what's rho g? Well, we're going to have uh, square root of 250 feet times gravity, which is 32.
<coughs> okay, so always look at that keyword maximum speed because the Jeep can travel over the crest of the hill and not lose contact with the road. So we're basically saying, like, what's yeah, how fast can it go before that normal fully disappears? Okay, so yeah, so that's it for these two problems. These are, again, these are just warm up problems into um, the equation of motion in the normal and initial directions, and um, we'll get on with the. Uh, 13.9 in the next video, so don't forget to follow and like, and I'll see you guys in the next video.